So we're now going to look at the equation for a hyperbola. And a hyperbola equation looks very, very similar to that of an ellipse. Instead of having a plus sign, though, we are dealing with a minus sign in between our two variables. OK, so what I want to do is just sort of look at a couple key things that we know how to figure out, and then we'll talk more about the graph. OK, so to find the x-intercept, we let y equal 0. So we will let y equal 0. This term disappears, and we're left with x squared over 16 is equal to 1. So what we need is x squared over 16, that'd be the same value, so x has to be plus or minus 4. Okay. To find our y-intercept, we let x equal 0. So that makes this term disappear, and we're left with negative y squared over 4 equals 1. The trick here is that we have a negative y squared. Neg y squared is always going to be positive, so what we end up with is a negative positive number equal to 1. That can't happen, so we actually do not have any y-intercepts. Okay. The last thing is the domain. Is what, that's what I want to look at. And to find the domain, what I think about is we know that this term, y squared over 4, has to be positive. Okay. It can't be, it can be 0 and it can be up. So what that tells us is we know that six, x squared over 16 has to be greater than or equal to 1. Because if we are subtracting a positive number from this term, giving us 1. That means this has to be greater than 1 already. Okay, solving this out, what that tells us is x squared is greater than or equal to 1. Oops, sorry, x squared is greater than or equal to 16. Take the square root of both sides. What we end up with is x squared is greater than or equal to 4, or x is less than or equal to negative 4. The numeric value has to be bigger than 4, either positive or negative. So graphically, what that tells us is we have a point here and a point here, and that everything on this graph is going to be out. There's not going to be anything in the middle. Okay, So actually, we'll talk a little bit more about what this graph looks like, but it's going to end up looking something like two sideways parabolas facing away from each other. Okay, and We'll talk more about how we actually know this. Okay, So let's go look at some general equations for hyperbolas. What I have up here is two different hyperbolas, one vertical, one horizontal. The vertical one's on the bottom because it's going up and down, and the horizontal one's going side to side. Okay, there's a lot of things going on here, but what I want to do is first and foremost just draw parallels to what we know about ellipses. Okay, so really, whatever the variable is that's first is going to dictate the way that the parabola is facing. This is the variable that's going to have intercepts, so therefore we're going to be going whatever direction that dictates. x first up and down, sorry, x first side to side, y first up and down. Okay, so if we had an equation for an ellipse, what we would end up doing is looking at the term underneath the x, and that would become part of the x radius, as I call it. You compare the x, the x and the y to see which is the major and minor axes. But basically, they are going to become the radii for the particular section. We do the exact same thing for hyperboles. Okay? So you look at the term underneath the x, and that is going to go out x units. You look at the term underneath the y, you're going to go up y units. So what you can do is you can create sort of four key points for where, if it was an ellipse, that ellipse would go through. Except instead of connecting them as a circle, what you really want to do is create a box. So where those two points would meet in each quadrant, draw the point, and then draw this little dotted box. There's different technical terms for it. Some books will call it the fundamental rectangle. I just call it the silly box. Because what the silly box really does is gives us the tools to find our asymptotes. Okay? So if you connect the corners of your box, the opposite corners, those are going to end up being the asymptotes for this curve. So you have one from one corner to the other, and then you do the opposite way as well. Okay, so what else do we know about this? We know that our intercept is going to be that same value, the square root of whatever's underneath the x squared or y squared, the leading term. And then just connect the points going towards your asymptote, making sure to get near your asymptote but not cross it. Okay, so I just talked about the horizontal one. The vertical one is exactly the same, except instead of dealing with the x squared first, we're dealing with the y squared first. And that's going to tell us we're going up and down. Okay, so other little things that we know. 
some language. The transverse is a term you'll hear from time to time, and basically what that is referring to is the distance between the two points that we have plotted on our curve. Okay, so sort of the equivalent of an axis and an ellipse, except it varies depending on which way it is facing. So your transverse for this side-to-side -side hyperbola is going to be this, where your transverse for your up and down is going to be this. It doesn't really depend on which is bigger or smaller like it does in an ellipse. The other axis is going to be called the conjugate. Okay, so the conjugate for a side-to-side -side hyperbola is going to be from top to bottom, and the conjugate for a up and down hyperbola is going to be from side to side. Okay, a couple other pieces of information. The ends of the transverse, the actual points on your graph are called your vertices. The opposing points, the ends of the conjugate, are called your covertices. Okay, a lot of information. Hopefully you're following along. And the last little piece of information is the focus, foci. Okay, and those are going to lie inside the curves, so depending on which way it faces, it depends on which axes it's on. And the relationship between your terms is, in this case, a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared. Okay, an easy way to remember this all is that the equation for hyperbola is, has a negative sign in between, but the relationship between your axes and your foci is addition. So you have 1 plus 1 minus. Ellipse is just the opposite. To find the equation, you're adding inside the equation, and then you're subtracting to find your relationship between your foci. Okay, so there's really a lot of parallels between the equation for a hyperbola and the equation for an ellipse. So hopefully if you get comfortable with one of them, you can then take that knowledge and just with a little bit of a tweak, apply it to the other.